Individual sanity. The huge lesson for us individuals living in modern society is to learn how to reconnect. We can only build a safe and just space for humanity if we look at the whole, because humanity shares one planet. And you might pray to God or say it's destiny. Just hiding all that we can be. Is it possible for economic growth to continue indefinitely without popping the resources of this planet? That's the bigger question. Anybody who thinks that, that it's crazy to say we can live without growth, the onus is on them to prove that we can live with it. Ecology disasters have nothing to do with political, religious, or ideological, or left, right, call it what you want, thinking anymore. It unites us all, and it forces us all to unite. If you fast forward and think, what will future generations be ashamed of? One of the things I'll be ashamed of is how we allowed poverty to exist on this planet for so long, when we easily could end it. For the first time, you're not only getting the voice of the possibly elected, or selected, or self-selected few at the top, the world isn't painted in that simplistic way it used to be. Wherever one is, is the perfect place one should be in. And that is the place we can start to change from. My name is Paul Maple and I'm a freelance filmmaker. I've been making short films for some years now and I wanted to make a longer film about some of the issues that concern me, my family and the wider world. Can we build a fair economy? Can we create a sustainable future? Can ordinary people influence society? What kind of future are we going to create for the next generation? We decided to pack up our house and live in a caravan for a year to travel across Europe and ask these questions. What we found was many people working with dedicated passion to improve lives in their own communities and beyond. This film has been our family's life for the last four years. We're not a big production company with big resources, it's just us finding the time between school runs to make something that we truly believe in. We, like many others, want to be part of the biggest movement on earth, the movement for change. In this film, we have looked at issues that we believe are key to shaping our collective future. The first of which is strategic change. Personally, we've always been frustrated by government decisions that we have felt powerless to influence. So where does the real power lie within politics? Is it with the politicians or the people who vote for them? the best politicians will have a strong aim about it. We can change the things. But they need to be supported by the people, because politicians move when the people move. A lot of people in government still have an old way of thinking, especially because they're pushed 
by an industrial lobby which has an old way of thinking, an old way of thinking which is making profits. I don't think personally that this is the future for a fair and equitable world. Politics is not working in responsibility, but in, in sectors. I'm responsible for that. This is culture, and there starts environment, and this is social, and this is construction. But reality problems are not according to these sectors. We need perspectives that overlap it's very simple and very old. We need a holistic perspective. If not, we are really, we are really losing. I would like to see us become more flexible and more adaptive and, and be able to respond more quickly to change. We tend to think in great blocks of time. We'll do this, we will react in this way where the things that influence us are reacting much faster. We need to become uh, more agile. I think the financial crisis that has just happened has been an extraordinary moment of opportunity that could be. And many people hoped that seeing the, you know, seeing the banks, who the giants that would always stand, suddenly falling on their knees. Extraordinary, things we never thought we would see happen. Well, if, if you can see some things you never thought you'd see, you see them happen. Aren't there other things that we might want to see that we could make happen? Perhaps we've got to find an alternative economic model that we would all thrive under much better. Perhaps we don't need, or perhaps we can't, keep GDP growth forever. It would require politicians talking about things that go right out of a comfort zone. But even to start speaking like that opens up the possibility that you'll get laughed at, derided, because you're talking of a world that we've never seen. So now you're starting to sound like a visionary, and that can be quite dangerous in the cut and thrust of mainstream politics. It's very difficult for a democratically elected government to put in place policies whose benefits might not be seen for 20, 30, 40 years. Our politicians, our representatives, who after all we choose, they need to perhaps remove this wish to be re-elected and substitute for it a wish to be remembered. On our trip around Europe, we took very little with us and lived much more simply. It was a relief to have less stuff to worry about. In Hungary, we met an economics professor at the University of Budapest who discussed the urgent need for an alternative economic model for the future. It got us questioning our own relationship to money and how it relates to happiness. Today's economy, the economic system is just desperate. It's desperate and more and more people, I think, uh, can see this, that this is a desperate system. Market system which is around us is uh, enabling greed to overcome over common sense and brought us to this situation in which we are completely irrationally and irresponsibly over-consuming natural resources and over-polluting nature around ourselves. This practice must be changed. Modern economy is not about the well-being of the people. The well-being of the people, the welfare of the people is just a byproduct of modern economy. Economy is, is about accumulation of, of financial wealth. This is humanity's responsibility to, to try to work out uh, an alternative which is viable. This one is not viable, this is not sustainable. And I think this is 
this must be the most important problem in, in economic thinking. What can we do about this economy which is destroying our, our future and planet? Well, capitalist market economies are structured in such a way, they're a bit like an escalator in a shop. They just go up, that's the way they go. So there's all sorts of cogs that are built into this system that makes the economy grow. But none of those are insurmountable. You could do all sorts of things through policy to try and take that engine away so that economy doesn't have to grow. I'd say the flip side is not, does an economy have to grow, but is it possible for an economy to grow? Because look what it's doing to the planet. Is it possible for economic growth to continue indefinitely without popping the resources of this planet? That's the bigger question. Anybody who thinks that, that it's crazy to say we can live without growth, the onus is on them to prove that we can live with it. The phrase gross domestic product or gross national product does not go back centuries. It was a relatively recent invention uh, some decades ago and the figure was invented in order to help politicians measure and demonstrate their success. So let's not imagine that gross domestic product has been with us since creation. It's not. It's new. We are led on this endless path of increasing GDP, perhaps because we have misinterpreted what makes happiness. Gross national happiness is simply development with a human face. The well-being and happiness of the citizens in a nation uh, is really rather important. None of us want to live an unhappy life in an unhappy nation, do we? So I think gross national happiness uh, should be a very clear aim of a society. If we do take seriously the suggestion that the happiness, the well-being of people in our society is something that we need to attend to and prioritise, then the implications are really very wide-ranging. And crucially, we need to think about uh, the education system and the education of our children to shift, really, from a competitive, status-driven way of judging ourselves and others so we need to shift that to think more about helping others and being interested in developing the relationships uh, that we have around us. I certainly don't think this idea is romantic. It's not romantic at all. It's reality. It's what we all deep down in our hearts know. We read, don't we now, that children, rather than having the latest computer game or an expensive iPhone, actually what children say is what they really would like is quality time with mum and dad, which actually doesn't cost anything. You don't have to go out and buy it in a shop. But the problem is for a government, it doesn't lead to an increase in GDP. But that's what children want. Not material possessions, but the human connection. So it became clear to us that not only are there workable alternative economic models, it is essential to consider them seriously because infinite growth on a finite planet is simply not viable. Natural resources are not only the key to our economy, they are also the key to our very existence. The environment was an issue that was passionately discussed by everyone we spoke to.
climate change is a really fascinating issue because it is one of the first really global problems which we need to face together or we will not be able to solve it. Ecology disasters have nothing to do with political, religious or ideological or left, right, call it what you want, thinking anymore. It unites us all and it forces us all to unite. people think they can negotiate with this planet. You see some of these people, you think they really believe that on the other side of the table is the planet and they're just going to sit there and say, wait a minute, just wait 10 years, you know, we're not quite ready yet. But you can't stand in front of a fire and say, I'm not ready, wait, or water or a flood. And we have to wake up to that. We even hardly understand the operation of this planet. We don't know how much carbon we can put in the atmosphere until we melt all the ice sheets. We don't know how much nitrogen we can add to the soil until we've poisoned the waters and the air. So first of all, we need to start off by much better understanding how this planet works. I believe that we have got to the stage where we can uh, take, given the fact that climate change will operate. It actually doesn't bother me if I'm proved wrong, because I have so far found absolutely nothing in what is being asked of us by the climate change community that wouldn't benefit the world anyway. More green energy, good thing, whether climate change takes place or not. Better food security, a good thing. Less wastage, a good thing. More recycling, a good thing. All of these things will benefit society even if climate change doesn't take place. We're starting to see retailing moving towards a green agenda, the organic food, the pressure to use less packaging. These are messages that people want to see and are therefore happy to go along with. So the retailers are not moving against their business, they're moving in the direction of the trends that their customers are showing politicians will move in that direction when their customers start demanding of them. And I am cynic, I do believe that politicians will not start taking climate change seriously until the voters demand it of them. Then ultimately they will take it seriously. But it rests not with politicians, not with commerce, not with government, it rests with the people. When they believe, society will shift. basically three general avenues through which each person can become actively involved in solving this issue. First, you can join some environmental organization as a member or sympathizer or activist. Second is as a consumer, you can start purchasing goods in a more responsible manner. Uh, takes a little bit of effort. You need to read all these little letters and stuff, but if you buy locally, if you consume less, that's definitely good for preventing climate change. And third avenue is as a voter. I mean, uh, obviously people should put more emphasis and looking what representatives in a political system they are voting for and what where they stand in a, on the issue of climate change.
There are many ways to connect with others to gain an understanding of our true potential. It is possible to see the world as a network of connections where thousands are working towards collectively improving our world. Strangely, this isn't reported in the mainstream media. Nearly everyone we spoke with had a negative perception of mainstream media. They saw it as manipulative and controlling, warping our world view towards conflict and fear. We found it interesting that people in many countries universally felt this way. What was also interesting was that everyone felt, like us, that the internet has a potential to change this perception for the better. There is something about the internet that, despite its flaws, seems to embrace the individual and the collective at the same time. Media for me feels kind of losing uh, 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 the key they had, and it was to inform society. The lack of, of honest journalism, or the lack of uh, a response by media and journalism to the real situation, creates a vacuum. So this new journalism, this new media 2.0 that's coming up now is filling this void. It's, it's, it is something that people are hungry for. Today the media is changing extremely, uh, even through people like us included, you know. There's new add-ups coming, there's a new way coming of uh, uh, finding out the truth to be for. The internet is unbelievable what's possible. There are enough tools these days with social media and everything. That's the way forward. It's only by doing that that um, we can show that the true power resides with individuals. There are different types of actions that we can take as individuals, even if we're very far away from where the problem actually is it's happening. And the fact that everything is in the interdependent actually um, gives us tools to have an influence on solving the problem elsewhere. Government structures, uh, formal rigid structures used to rule the world. But today with what technology offers us, I think we can break that. We have now very recently in Germany astonishing uh, attempts through uh, internet petitions to the politics. Within two weeks, 100,000 people who sign that they don't want to have this and this initiative. That they, and then they need to, to talk about that in Parliament. For the first time, you're not only getting the voice of the possibly elected or selected or self-selected few at the top, the world isn't painted in that simplistic way it used to be. I think there's much stronger capacity of community now to say, no, I don't like this, to make ourselves known. And that's facilitated by technology. But it isn't the thing that we're aiming at. The thing we've got to be aiming at is humans. As what do we, what kind of society do we want? The technology has allowed us to ask that question internationally for one of the first times ever. You may be closer in opinion to someone in China now than you might be to the person sitting next to you. It's us, every single human being, wherever they are in the world, who has that power. And I think that if we unite as human beings, as individuals, we can bring the change. As our journey progressed, we began to change. Meeting and talking to informed, proactive people in every country we travelled to was beginning to have an effect. 
Evenings around the campfire would be spent in urgent discussion about our place in the world and how we, as individuals, can have a real impact. I think it is true that given the choice, we would choose to live in a world where all trade was fair, where violence was irrelevant, poverty a myth and pollution unheard of. Given the choice. Yet has the choice really been taken away from us? I don't think anyone is powerless. You're powerful in your relationships with people in your community, with your children. Everybody has power. Power kind of flows in, in society all the time. It's always been renegotiated. It's like this kind of invisible force field. So everybody has power. Everybody experiences the power of others. And it's how you renegotiate and improve that force field that, that really matters. If as an individual you don't do anything, you are making a difference, you're making a negative difference. You're throwing away all that plastic, not worrying about where it came from. You're burning carbon emissions in the atmosphere. You're not thinking about the impact of your life on people around the world. So we are making a difference whether we, whether we try to or not. We should harness our interest and our desire to do the right thing and make a positive difference. You can make a difference. You can live smart by the climate. You can try to do the right thing by poverty. And you can join up with millions of people around the world who all feel as frustrated as you do. And when we put our force together, we can start a way for change. Wherever one is, is the perfect place one should be in. And that is the place we can start to change from. And from that place, whatever we see around us is not working. Act on one, link with other people. It's such a boost to know that there are others thinking the same thing, that we're not the only one. Sometimes we think, oh gosh, it's only me thinking something. I'm a rebel, I'm an alternative, I'm here. But when you all of a sudden see that the majority of other people think like you think, then you say, hey, wait a second, why are we not voicing it? And then you start realizing that you can organize that voice Fundamentally, you feel better if you act for society. Good luck to everybody to feel good in this world without trying to change it. I, I wish you good luck, but I don't think it's possible. I don't think you can really get by in it without wanting to change it. And if you want to change it but don't do anything about it, that's incoherent. And if you find a way to act out this thing, the, the, the wish to change in the world, you, you should feel better. It's more coherent, it makes sense. I'm not sure this can be explained, but people, I think, will feel it. We know that it's not just to do with talking about it. It's not just to do with complaining about it, and it's not just to do with intellectually, conceptually exploring new models. It's actually about doing it, behaving it. So be part of it, join them. You have to, you have, to be part of it, so don't stay out. Stay in, go in and, and join a group. If you prefer to be part of an NGO, be part of an NGO, if not a church group. If not, be part of a women's organization or, or a youth group or a, a trade union. Or a, if you are at the university, join an academic group. If you're a student, then join a student group. So join somebody and be part of it. So if everybody did that, then our power would be unstoppable. On returning to the UK, there was one issue that we felt we had not looked at in enough depth. Poverty is a very complex issue, but it is an issue that must be addressed because the divide between rich and poor is still growing across the world. This is something that we are all aware of, but what can we do about it? If you fast forward and think, what will future generations be ashamed of? One of the things they'll be ashamed of is how we allowed poverty to exist on this planet for so long. When we 
easily could end it. We have the money, we have the means, um, what's lacking is the kind of social and political systems to deliver it, and that is something we can fix. The latest figure is that you could eradicate, not just half, but eradicate all poverty below a very low level of, of $1.25 a day with $60 billion a year, which is actually very small money. The biggest killer of children in the whole world is diarrhea. We've had the solution for that for 100 years. It's a sachet of powder that costs five pence. Just because we can come up with solutions, there's still a political and social inertia to actually get out there and, and use that. eradicate all poverty with $60 billion a year. 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 $60 billion a I'll give you an example. Just to meet the food needs of those 850 million people who live with hunger would take less than 1% of the world's current food supply. That's nothing. To get everybody out of poverty, living, everybody who's living at least on, on $1 a day, that would take a fraction of 1% of the world's income. And if you wanted to get electricity to everybody who currently doesn't have it, that would take less than 1% of the world's carbon dioxide emissions. So just those facts alone show that you can't say that tackling poverty, eliminating poverty, would cause unbearable environmental stress. That is not the source of the stress. It wouldn't be ideal in the end that we had a society where you are responsible for every other member of that society. Your responsibility doesn't end at your border, it ends at every other human. What we can do if we see serious problems in countries far away from our own is not to simply be defeated by a sense of impotence that we can't, it's all, it's too big for us, that we can't uh, affect change there, so, so what's the point, and just go back to our normal lives. Maybe the challenge then is to take small steps to remain engaged with it, to think about, well, what are other people doing in relation to these huge challenges, to think about, well, maybe are there charities that you might want to support, because um, the suggestion is that actually this is a key way in which we might affect change um, worldwide. Making this film has restored our faith in human beings and the connections that can be made with one another. We met some incredible people on our journey who all gave their time willingly and with enthusiasm and we learnt a lot from their generosity. Solutions are the future. As humans we have an amazing capacity to think big, to imagine beyond our current existence. This can be our blessing or our downfall but it's up to us to choose which path we take. We hope that by sharing this journey, we are making a contribution towards shaping the future. To further this, we have created a very easy to use online video forum so that you can share your thoughts, stories and solutions on these topics too. We'd like to get everyone involved in discussing these ideas because if we share our knowledge, we can learn from one another. From the moment you wake up in the morning, there's stuff happening around you coming into your face and there's stuff happening inside your head. It's very, very stimulating to be a human being. <laughs> you know, you get up, there's children, there's food, there's brush your teeth, there's the television, there's the radio, there's traffic in the road, got to go to work, got to sort this out, sort that out, pay the mortgage. It's very stimulating. I don't think people are helpless. I think they're just so stimulated by what it is to be alive that Inside all that jazz, inside all that noise, they don't pause enough 
or they don't do those things where they just go, ah, this is life. It's worth doing the right thing and it's worth rebelling against apathy and it's worth trying to search a, an internal coherence and it's, it's worth, uh, you know, doing things for others and changing. But this, this is an experience, I think that, that was important in my life, this experience when I made a step and I felt that something is changing inside me and, you know, the clouds are clearing up and the, the future is opening and I think people need this kind of hope. Some kind of experience which, which shows that there is another meaning in life than just surviving it. If somebody's thinking about changing and I, I would say to them, what's your fuel for change? I would say to them, first of all, in what circumstances and situations do you most easily connect with the wonder and energy of life? Don't know what those circumstances are, but audit what they are, notice what they are, and spend some time hanging out in those circumstances, whether it's with your children or walking or whatever it is. Spend some time in those circumstances. They will feed you nurture you, fuel you, so that you can deal with life and be a proper agent of change. For me, my tool is that I take every day at least half an hour to ask certain questions. For example, who am I and where am I going to? But only by putting these questions once a day, this kind of, you know, shakes you and takes you out of this I'm going there, I have to do this, I have to buy that, and all this noise and permanent noise. But just to break this um, flow of noise, it, it starts to grow something inside you. One of the things about being a compassionate and intelligent human being is that you realize that we all of us both have a force to emerge and grow and develop and fulfill our potential, but also because of our biological programming, we equally have a very strong urge to stay the same as we were. So one of the things we need to be very understanding of and strategic about, both in ourselves and in society, is whilst we coax ourselves into changing, we also manage to understand those bits that are resistant and frightened and bring them along on the journey of transformation. in history that there is something changes in the human mind you know it's like a need arises and and then it's not only one to one how it starts to spread strangely it starts to grow and so if, if this is the moment then we will see very interesting things in the future we have a chance to make a difference to our dying day can do a lot. But first he has to uh, become aware that he is one small spot which makes the change. Every person is very important in the whole process. Everybody feels inside how it's to be right, how you should live your life, and what is good and what is bad. Everybody feels it. But we don't listen to ourselves. The 
youth are going to change the world, and they're going to change it by sitting and talking. We cannot hope for it. We have to do it now. I absolutely think the world will be changed by kindness. So if just everybody does the right thing, that's perfectly enough. Do not forget to invite other people to come and to be part of the change. We, we want to do. We want to be the change, not talk about it anymore. Well, as I'm doing it for the global documentary, I like it. <laughs>